Her infidelities will still make me have to pay for spousal support. Oh, man. What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another story. Guys, I will put the link to this in the description like usual. You guys read the title? Let's get into it. So, I divorced my cheating wife. Good. <laughs> good. He starts off with, it's been about two years since I started the process into divorcing my wife when I found out she was cheating. Before this was going on, I noticed my marriage was going downhill because around the time her personality changed was when she found out that if she got pregnant, she would end up having special needs child. I should also mention her father never really liked me at all. And during the time when I was finding out that she was cheating on me, her dad was telling her to find a lawyer so she can divorce me. I found the text of her going back and forth with her friend talking crap about me behind my back and the things I was not doing as a husband, even though she wasn't even being the wife she was supposed to be. I even found text messages of her flirting with a guy that she was cheating on me with. When I was with her, she always supposedly tried to look for work, but every time she found work, it was either temporary or she has some issues with co-workers and or management, which pretty much makes me the main provider. When we were having our issues, she told me not to speak to anybody about it. But in the end, I found out she was telling everybody, her family, her friends, her church congregation, and my family, while I was sitting there stressing about everything. This situation has effed me up because being in California and living in a no-fault state her infidelities will still make me have to pay for spousal support. Oh, man. Yeah, I've heard horror stories about California. Oh, man. I've been paying money, but now she's trying to use her lawyer to, to say that I wasn't giving her the payments. And I gave my lawyer proof. Then I found out a month and a half later, her lawyer put in some paperwork to take money from my paycheck on top of supposed money I didn't give her. When that was going on around March, I provided proof to my lawyer that I did pay her. My ex's lawyer stated that I didn't give her one month payment and a half payment for February. I showed them proof then her lawyer backtracked and said she didn't receive one of the payments. I gave her payments through either Venmo or cashier's checks so it can be recorded. I'm going to have to find another lawyer because this guy is not helping me whatsoever on top of possibly having to do a defamation suit. I just came here to vent because when you thought you love somebody and think that she's not like other girls but find out she is not the one that you married and she is like other girls, it really puts a knife in your chest. Wow. Let me give my thoughts. Dang, man. I've heard a lot of horror stories about California, trying to divorce in California, and guys getting it handed to them. Getting it handed to them. I think a story I just did, a video where I talked about an article. They were talking about a couple celebrities. Uh, one celebrity, he wasn't even the father of a child, but in California, he was ordered to still take care of that kid. He was he was legally obligated to financially take care of the kid. It's so unfortunate. And the woman lied to him. She lied to him and said it was his, I believe. And it wasn't even it wasn't even his kid, but he was stuck having to he stuck having to pay for that child until they're eighteen or twenty one and Man. So in California this she was purposely not working. She knew what she was doing. She knew all along. She had her father telling her, you need to divorce him. She was cheating. She knew, hey, if I, if I get out of this situation, he's going to pay me. And this is, this is the sad thing about marriage. Men gain nothing from it. You know, women will claim, oh, I love you so much. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. 
this and that. Here's the thing. She knows good and well. She'll, she'll play dumb, but she knows good and well. If she marries you, she's got you locked in. She's going to use the guilt game on you. You're obligated to take care of me. You're obligated to do this. I'm your wife. You're the man. You're the husband. You're supposed to do this. And then she, if she knows if everything goes south, everything goes wrong, if you mess up or if she messed, mess up, it doesn't matter. She's going to win in the end. She still doesn't have to work because he's going to take care of me, even though I am not married to him anymore. That doesn't make any sense to me. She's used to the lifestyle or whatever these judges be using, you know, to justify the man having to pay spousal maintenance. That's not fair. And even if he catches her cheating, he has evidence of her cheating. He still has to pay. And it, he's he ended up in a crappy situation where he was paying. And then the, the, the grimy lawyer freaking goes and files paperwork to have his check, have money taken out of his check for more spousal support. And then they both pretend like he didn't pay anything outside of that paycheck. Like, this isn't fair. Are you, are you kidding me? Why do you want to destroy this man that bad? You married him and started cheating on him. You treat him like crap. Now that you're separated from him, you still want to punish him. You still want to hand it to him. Pay me. Give me money. I don't care. I don't care how you how you're living. And from what I know and what I hear about California, it's pretty expensive out there. My opinion, it is not worth it. Speaking for, speaking for myself, no marriage, no relationship. Why? Why waste your time? Why waste your time? No one feels that whole, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with you and it's only me and you and we're together as one. No, don't believe that. Don't fall for that. No, I'm sorry. Man, I feel bad for this guy. Let's see if he's in the comments. Let's check out the comments. Someone said, a tale as old as time. BS trying to play nice and take the high road, only to end up steamrolled. They think their wayward spouse still cares about them, refusing to accept that this is now their sworn enemy, who sees you only as an obstacle. Next time, take the kitty gloves off and go for the juggler. You know what, man? You're right, man. Um, for, for the guys out there who have broken up with women, you know, who found out they were doing some crap behind your back or they just did something to make you say it's over. And they just give you that look like, how dare you break up with me? What do you mean? And they instantly turn into a different person. It is the creepiest thing I have ever experienced. And I experienced that with my last situation. Before I started doing my videos, I experienced that. I'm out. I'm out of here. What do you mean you're leaving? No, 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 no. You're, and all of a sudden, you, you're trying to make it make things very tough for me. You're trying to make things. You tried to make things very tough for me, and they will do that. So when he says, people, some guys are refusing to accept that this is now their sworn enemy. I promise you, because that's how she looks at you. You divorce this woman. She's like, how dare you divorce me? I can do what I want to you. I can cheat all I want. I'm not ready to divorce. You don't just get to leave. Oh, you're going to leave? Okay, I'll show you. She doesn't care if you have to sleep in your car out in California because you can't afford to pay for a place to stay and lay your head because she's taking your money. She doesn't care. She sleeps like a baby. Let's say that situation happens to you. You have to sleep in your car. Wash up in gas stations and things like that. She's going to sleep like a baby next to the guy that's blowing her back out. Like a baby. Wake up and make him breakfast with the money that you gave her that month for spousal maintenance. She's going to cook him breakfast. She's going to be laughing and smiling and she can hear about you sleeping in your car. 
She's going to shrug her shoulders and say, eh, not my problem. Sad. It's not worth it, guys. I'm sorry. It is not worth it. He responded to that comment and said, I tried to be vicious due to what she pulled. I felt the resentment after she left. I lawyered up, but I think he's intimidated by her lawyer and seems to be bending over backwards for her because he has not answered my questions. Definitely get a new lawyer. Definitely. My lawyer made it my lawyer made an excuse about why he won't argue and how she's entitled to my money. When it comes to this, F California. Someone said, time to get a new lawyer, dude. And he said, yep, that's the plan. Man, this dude is in a very, very bad situation. Oh my, my. Someone said, I used to think that marriage was for love. Then I got divorced and realized that it's just a legal contract between two parties. I'm not sure if I'll ever get married again. But if I do, definitely getting a prenup. Look, man, people who have gotten married and got divorced, I don't I don't understand how they have the courage to do it again, even with a prenup. Nah, no. Mm -mm. Just being in, in long term relationships and seeing how women act and seeing how they can turn on you and change on you is enough for me to be like, you know what? No marriage for me. I'm good. I'm good. He responded to that and said, I'm not rich, but that would have helped me in the long run to protect myself or convince her to get married in a red state because they don't take kindly to infidelity, even though I'm not a Christian. She is one, supposedly. Someone said it does not, ma it does not matter where you get married. It matters where you reside when you get divorced. Let me, I want to check out his uh, post history. See if he's talked about this relationship. All right, yeah, so this is two days old. Cause I really would like to know what's going to happen um, with him. His lawyer sucks. I'm sorry, his lawyer sucks. Horrible. Okay, so a year ago he posted, my wife started showing a narcissistic tendencies close to the end of our marriage. Yeah, he did say this was a long process. Let's check out this this post here. All right, so he had posted in narcissistic spouses. My wife started showing narcissistic tendencies close to the end of our marriage. I found the sub and I don't know if I should post this here. My wife of seven years, but then together, but been together for 15 years. For the time being, I thought our marriage was good, but within the last two years, she's been showing me that it was never okay. I was trying to get out of my in-law's place because I know I know our welcome was wearing thin, and I was getting tired of my father-in-law's BS. Uh, he did say his father-in-law did not like him, so you were living there. I was... Wow. The months when things were starting to go sour, my father-in-law was berating me through my wife, which caused the rift in our marriage. She never, want to move, she never wanted to move out and made excuses stating I was trying to make her pay half of everything. I never told her that. I told her she would if she got paid as much as me or more. She was starting to become colder and different and, and didn't really reciprocate any of my love that I gave her. Her father kept complaining more and more about me and even admitted that he wished that she never married me. When she got sick, she blamed me for that and said that she felt heartbroken. She never acted heartbroken but mentions that later when we agreed with her parents. See below. When her dad decided to kick me out, it was around the same time that happened. For years I tried to make it work, but I could see her gradually getting colder and colder, and me getting more frustrated. Then the real issues happened. Within this last month, I found messages on the tablet where she was talking to her friend about divorcing me, and finding explicit messages being exchanged with some other guy, even mentions of doing it in a two-seater car. I was heartbroken and confronted her with it. She changed up her story three times along with changing her password on the tablet. I confronted her parents about it and she got mad. Everything was thrown at me by her and exposed a lot of things to her parents. Her dad was mad and yelled at her about a testimony she gave at church and was getting sympathy. But some things were exposed about her to them. 
Even her mom didn't know what's going on, and her mom thought her daughter told her everything. Some of the texts to her friends mentioned that her parents know about this guy. Her dad is more likely happy that we're separating, but at the same time her parents don't look at her the same, which also made her upset about that. She didn't even care about our marriage. She cared about how her parents saw her. Within the last month, we've been arguing off and on and slowly finding out that she was trying to blindside me with a divorce. But she still sticks to her story that her friend did those messages on her tablet and she's making the exchange with a guy. Mm, mm, mm. The same friend she was using as an excuse was also going through a divorce. I pointed out her faults. And all I see her do is roll her eyes, huff, deflect, make excuses, and start blaming me for things that she should have mentioned at the beginning. She even tried to say that she did nothing wrong. I've mentioned we should go through counseling, but she doesn't want to. That makes me assume that it will expose what kind of person she is and said, and said counselor will probably end up taking my side. I couldn't get a copy of messages because I know she was going to delete it but I took pictures of them in chronological order. Now she's staying at her parents, but it's not the same as when she stayed there before. A couple of days ago, I tried to apologize about everything I can think of. I admit I have faults, but I believe whatever I did was not that serious. I have sleeping issues, so I'll be up for the afternoon and night because of my job on top of having friends who are also night owls. I also forgave her for everything she's done to me. I heard her SOB over the phone lightly, but she did not say anything back. I am planning on going to see a lawyer. I saved those messages that I found on top of some financial statements from her. I am also planning on talking to their pastor because this guy who claims to be a man of God shouldn't have been acting the way he did, especially being a pastor of that church. I have been feeling like crap the past month, but I am hopefully getting over it. Updates it's official. I'm going to get divorced. I've, I've lawyered up and found whatever I can for the proceedings. A lot of new things were revealed. I've spoken to my family. My soon-to-be ex-wife has been talking to my family, and all she has done is complained and not confronted me about the issues we had. She wanted my family to talk to me about those issues. She tried to downplay the messages I've, I've found to my family and told them I didn't want marriage counseling. She, all, she always told me not to tell people what we were going through because it's none of their business, but has been telling everybody else who would listen to her. Got to keep my head held high and not let this get to me. Wow, let me give my thoughts on this. Oh man, so I, yeah, after reading his more recent post, I was curious. I was curious to see if he had posted afterwards. I wanted to see if he was able to get a lawyer, but that would have been a very, very quick update anyway. But man, seeing this, he he, <laughs> he has gone through it. So it sounds like it sounds like her father just feels as if you're not able to take care of her. You, I don't know why you you both were living in their home, you know. Um, and she started complaining that if we move out together, he's going to make me pay half. So it just sounds like she just she wanted to be a stay at home wife and be taken care of. And her father felt like you should be with somebody who's going to take care of you. And he didn't like you. It sound, that's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like he didn't like you for that reason. Like I said, I don't know why you guys were living with them. Um, I know California is very expensive very expensive from what i hear from other people um so that could have been the reason but my thing is why even get married like what what was the reasoning for getting married living with your in-laws and she's cheating on you while living with your in-laws and you had said she had a uh, work jobs but it, it would be temporary she didn't she it, clearly she just did not want to work she wanted to be taken care of and you said she had she she was afraid of how her parents would look at her like she wanted her parents to look at her in a certain light yeah she definitely wants to be taken care of definitely and she felt like she regretted marrying you because she felt like you couldn't do it um her father felt like you couldn't do it man that's just a big disaster and now look at the situation you're in dude 
we read on the, the, the more, more recent post. You divorced her and you have to pay her alimony. And you've been paying with cashier checks and Venmo. And they started garnishing your wages behind your back and, and, and they're pretending like you didn't even pay. You are in some deep crap. And you have a crappy lawyer? Oh, my, my, my. 100% that lawyer you have, you have to get rid of. Leave that person alone. Stop paying that lawyer. Not worth your time. It's not going to help you. You have to find a lawyer that's going to be on your side. They're supposed to be on your side and fight for you. Oh, man. Let's check out the comments on this one. Someone said, she sounds like a piece of work. Why so enmeshed with her parents? I can tell you. See, he says, her family took care of everything for her. I had to get answers because in a text that I found, it stated that her parents knew about the guy she was messing around with. Apparently, they didn't. Look, yeah, I can, I can tell what type of person this is. Yeah, she's spoiled by her parents. She's spoiled by her father. She's going to look for that in a man. When she's out looking for a man, she wants to be taken care of. And her father feels like if she's going to marry somebody, he needs to be able to take care of her. And that's I'm telling you, that's where all that all the turmoil came from. Someone said it sounded like it sounds like there are more than two people in this marriage. What is the point of involving her parents and pastor? It would be one thing to involve a therapist and you should absolutely consult a lawyer. But you are not married to her parents, so you should not involve them. I mean, it sounds like their involvement contributed to the end of this marriage in the first place. So why continue to include them? He responded and said, when I found out, when I found the messages about the infidelity and her talking to a friend about it, she said her parents knew about the guy she has been fooling around with. When I talked to her about it, I got three different excuses and it was gaslit. Yeah, man, she's a liar, dude. She's a spoiled liar. Since she wasn't being honest with me, I needed answers. She said she wasn't talking to her parents about our issues but their behavior towards me seemed different after a while during the argument with her parents her dad mentioned she made a testimony at the church he was angry telling her that the testimony she gave was to gain sympathy from the church and it was all for and it was all for nothing due to this new information they received what do you think about this in the comments i'll put the link to this in the description like usual and i will catch you guys at the next one